Hello, everybody. Welcome to Troop Talk Live. That is indeed the second time I've gotten to say that. This is our <laughs> second show. It's We've got a great crowd building here um, to watch with us on Facebook Live. You may know me. I'm Gina. You may know this, this guy. This is Aaron. You know him. And then you'd certainly at this point know Angelique if you've been watching Pub Chat Live <laughs> or if you tuned into the last Troop Talk Live. Angelique, thanks for being on with us again today. Oh, thanks. This has been a lot of fun and I'm enjoying talking to everybody. Well, we are definitely excited about today's show, Angelique, because as, as we were talking about just before we went on went live here, you know, everybody knows the Scouts BA pro, BSA program. The youth are the leaders, right? It's a youth led right. program. But how do they know what to do, right? You don't, they're not just, they don't just come fresh out of Cub Scouts already knowing how to just automatically be a leader, right? What a great topic yeah. for the show today. I'm, I'm excited to get going. Yeah, so I mean, this is uh, this is a big deal. We talk often about Scouts BCA being a youth-led program, and we think, oh, great, the Scouts—they're the leaders, they're in charge. And then we get into troop activities, and we're a little upset sometimes. Parents are a little upset that, especially new crossover parents, like this is disorganized. This is not what I'm expecting out of a troop. Well, we forget sometimes that they're learning to be leaders. And in order to learn, we have to teach them how to be good leaders. So that's what we're going to talk today about teaching them to be good leaders. Yes, uh, the audience is super passionate about this topic. A lot of folks saying, I'm excited to talk about this today. Um, quick shout out to PAC84. And we even got into this subject a tiny bit on Cub Chat Live on Friday. Because, uh, you know, there's two sides to this coin. Sometimes, you know, sometimes leaders aren't letting the scouts lead at all. And sometimes they are expecting that they would have all this training that how in the world would they have it? Right. The little peek behind the scenes, Angelique is the brains behind the show. And <laughs> she's already schools us before we even go live. Um, I was kind of reading through notes. And, and I mean, this... This sentiment of, you know, empowering youth to lead is integral in the history of scouting, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one of the things we learn in Wood Badge as an adult volunteer, and hopefully you've taken Wood Badge, and if you're an adult volunteer, and if not, I can't recommend it enough, but we learn this phrase, train them, trust them, let them lead. Oh, look at the graphic. It's so awesome. <laughs> train them, trust them, let them lead. And we hear that over and over, and, and you might hear it and go, okay, who is this guy? What does this mean? Um, so William Greenbar Bill Hillcourt, uh, was a very influential leader in the BSA from 1927 to 1992. He helped develop the American Wood Badge. Um, he was also very passionate about teaching. And he did three different editions of the BSA's official Boy Scout handbook. He was a writer for Boy's Life. And one of the things that um, we, we call him Green Bar Bill because he had his name with two green bars, which is patrol leader. Um, and so he was really big on making sure that we set youth up for leadership skills and that we had to train them before we could expect them to know how to lead. So we have to train them first. And that is like the key point to the whole thing, to a whole youth led uh, organization is that we have to make sure they know how to do what you're asking them to do. We're setting them up to succeed. So that is train them, trust them, let them lead. That's pretty much the crux of it. Excellent, excellent. I want to point out real quick a, a, a very uh, a valid question from Eric, our viewer, who's asking, will there be a recording? This could apply to any of our shows. Yes, Eric, there will be a recording. When we're done here, this video will stay. It will live on this Facebook page, hopefully forever. You can go back and watch it at any time, share it with your friends, continue to make comments if you'd like. In the meantime, Lots of folks uh, commenting. Shout out to Troop 127 in Maple, North Carolina. Good afternoon, Luke. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate that. Todd's an assistant scout master watching. Thank you. And our good friend Rusty's watching. Andy is watching. Thank you, guys. If you have any questions for Angelique, uh, she's got answers. That's why we have her on the show, because she's got answers. Uh, Angelique mentioned Wood Badge as a, a tremendous resource for all scouting leaders. Angelique, what are some other resources? Because we're talking today, folks, about training scouts to become leaders, what sure. kind of resources are available for that? Oh gosh, there are so, so many. There are so many resources, but the very basic thing that we start with is the EDGE method. 
Okay, this is a fundamental component. Uh, we learned the edge method um, right away in scouting and the edge is explain, demonstrate, guide and enable. So it's basically how to teach, how to teach a new skill, how to teach something to a youth, how something for a youth to teach to another youth. And we set the kids up to practice this. So they're doing things like knots. And while knots are super handy and super awesome and a major skill to show off to your buddies, um, knots are also a great way for us to practice the edge method we're explaining how to do uh the knot we're demonstrating we're showing them physically explain demonstrate guide then we're guiding them through tying the knot and then enable we're letting them do it themselves so the edge method is like the number one thing that we start with when we're teaching we use this as a tool, um, but we also have a whole bunch of other tools that we use to teach um, to teach resources to teach in leadership skills. So, like the patrol structure um, in a troop, this is a way for scouts to practice those leadership skills on a micro level. Oh, so many good diagrams <laughs> on a micro level, um, and then they are learning in their small group of eight, six to eight scouts. Um, they're practicing leading that patrol. They're gaining those skills. Then they're becoming other parts, uh, other troop leadership skills, like maybe quartermaster, or um, they're maybe doing something like uh, scribe. And then they work their way towards, as they're learning, they work their way towards senior patrol leader. And then beyond senior patrol leader, there are all kinds of other opportunities too, like junior assistant scoutmaster. Um, but along the way, there are we have these great books, these great resources that your child may have somewhere in their bag, um, or they may have never seen it, but there's a patrol leader's guide and there's a senior patrol leader's guide. And those are great resources to help teach your scout how to be a great leader. Um, but then beyond that, we can talk about um, some other opportunities and there are way more than just the troop level so have you heard of some of them does anyone know <laughs> well okay i know like that in uh my crew that the a lot of the boys and girls in there were also in troops yeah. and they were often looking for a little more information on nylt and i'm seeing nylt get in the pop in the comments quite a bit here so mm -hmm. are we on are we on track yeah, so NYLT is one that a lot of people know about, National Youth Leadership Training, and that it's administered at the council level. And scouts go, they spend a week practicing those leadership skills. So it is really important if your scout is having like a senior patrol leader or patrol leader, go to NYLT, encourage them to go to NYLT and learn more about leadership skills um, in, a, in a concentrated setting. It's a lot of fun. It's also really great practice. But did you know that there are things beyond NYLT for scouts? Um, there are so many other cool resources uh, beyond NYLT. There's also the um, National Advanced Youth Leadership Experience called NAIL. And NAIL is, can be administered at like a national level and your scout can go there and learn even more leadership skills. Um, we have things like Powderhorn, which is a, a learning to lead a high adventure. And we have stuff like Kodiak Challenge, which is pushing your boundaries to expand your leadership in an outdoor setting. So there are so many cool opportunities that your scout may not even be aware of. But once they start down that path to leadership, it's as much as they want to do it. If they are happy with senior patrol leader, awesome. They can, But they can continue to build those skills uh, all the way until young adulthood which is pretty neat. Yeah, there, it seems like there's always enough training and programs that like, I'm always surprised when I hear of one. Like there's always more. If you just keep, you, you can scratch the surface or you can dig deeper and like some of the crafty scouts find them themselves and they're like, I want to do this. And you're like, I've never heard of that. Thank you for educating me. Um, the yeah. scout become the teacher. Yeah, the important, thing, the important thing is to meet the scout where they are. So um, wherever they are in their leadership journey, there is something in scouting to help support them in that. And uh, that even may be, uh, there are other, we're here primarily to talk about Scouts BSA, but OA has a bunch of opportunities too for youth to practice their leadership skills. So it's just a matter of finding what's out there and meeting your Scouts need. 
right? We're seeing a lot of comments saying OA, yeah. um, ILST, I think yeah. has come up a couple of times. So yeah, let's talk about ILST because that is like the key. Um, so ILST is Introduction to Leadership Skills for Troops. This is the very basic training that you can uh, facilitate with your troop to help your scouts understand their roles in the troop. So this is a fantastic program that uh, you run at the troop level, and it's good for both uh, scouts who are new to the Scouts BSA program. Um, so perhaps you have a new troop. This is a great way to help introduce them to all the positions and how leadership is supposed to happen in a troop. It's also great for those scouts who have just crossed over. So the scouts who have just crossed over and are trying to figure out how the troop works, the older scouts in the troop can facilitate an ILST course for the younger scouts. And so in my troop, we do it on a weekend campout. And uh, that's often one of the first campouts that we do with the scouts. What a good idea. I want to reiterate too, because Troop Talk Live is fairly new for our audience. We are talking about Scouts BSA specifically um, and for, you know, programs for older youth. So I'm wondering, we've talked a lot about what an adult's role is in Cub Scouts. It's kind of a lot. Um, but in Scouts BSA, how would you describe, you know, the, the role adult leaders play? Oh, fantastic. So my favorite analogy is we are there as scaffolding. Um, we, wow, he is on top of the images today. Well, behind the Brian, yes. Yeah, he is above and beyond on today. Top of it. So we are the scaffolding. We are not the leaders. We, yes, we joke that we're there often to make sure that the scouts don't die. So safety, yes, number one important. We're there to make sure that all of our safety standards are followed and that we're coming home with the same amount of scouts we left with, um, preferably. But uh, we're there to scaffold, which means that um, we're there to facilitate their learning. They're on the journey. We're there to um, make sure that they're receiving the training that they need to be successful. And um, that isn't so much telling them what to do, but to um, to make sure that they have the tools equipped to to deliver the program themselves. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, it's, it's excellent, excellent. Um, got a couple of folks in the comment. Eric says the job is to drink coffee. I, that's I agree with that. That's accurate. It is, it is. <laughs> but you're drinking coffee with an eye of what kind of leading questions can I ask to help these scouts? And we talked about this in the Cub Chat Live. What kind of leading questions can I ask to help them be successful? So, so not necessarily sit and watch them have things devolve into a right. hot mess, but hey, looks like that Dutch oven might be getting a little hot. What mm -hmm. do you think we could do to make sure that that, uh, that dinner isn't burned? So it's not necessarily, it's more about asking those leading questions instead of just telling them, hey, take that off, it's gonna burn. Um, so, and, yeah. And I wanted to, I wanna give a, a plug. Uh, Angelique has been a guest on the other show that Gina and I do, Cub Chat Live. Gina and Angelique talked last Friday about the uh, Weeblos to uh, Scout transition, and Angelique and I are gonna talk about it this Friday. All that to say that role for parents can be tricky, uh, you know, because in a Cub Scout parent, you're gonna jump, you're probably doing the work yourself. You're the one handling the oven. You're the one around building the campfire. Yeah. It's different in Scouts BSA. I wanna encourage everybody to tune into Cub Chat Live this Friday to learn more about that. Was that good, Gina? Did you see yeah. how I sort of plugged that? Um, but I do have a question for you, Angelique. Sure. Um, there are some Scouts BSA troops out there who maybe have fallen into a habit of not being as boy led for whatever reason. Maybe they're a brand new troop just getting started, right? Sure, that it could yeah. be any one of any reason how that could sort of happen. Sure. What resources are available for a troop like that? If I'm a Scouts BSA leader and I kind of really, you know what? I'm watching this show and I'm kind of, you know, I think I'm doing too much. I'm too hands-on, right? Too I need to be little. letting the, the or, or too little. Or sure. Too yeah. Little. That what happens kind of, too. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay. What, so, what kind of resources are available? So in the case of 
you know, do too much. That means the adults are actually being the leaders and not the scouts, but it can swing the other way where you're doing too little. You're letting your scouts flounder a little bit and you say, oh, you know, it's a safe place to fail. It is, but we want to set them up for success. So we want to make sure that they have all, all, everything that they need to succeed. So in that case, sometimes it can be really good to go back to basics. It can be good to revisit the ILST, uh, Introduction to Leadership Skills for Troops. It can be good to go back to the PLC, um, Patrol Leaders Council, and sit down with the youth and ask again, start asking those leading questions so that the youth aren't sitting back and waiting for the adults to give them an answer, but it's for the scouts to, um, the scouts to step in and start brainstorming with, with okay, what are we doing? What are we gonna do next month? What do you need to get there? What? How do we make sure that we're setting this up right? So um, the big thing is recognizing where you could improve and then taking steps to make sure that you know how it's supposed to be delivered. Um, and that kind of segs right into what I really wanted to talk about in a minute, but it's um, about what leadership and training are available for adults. And maybe real wait, quick, there. real quick, maybe Gina, uh, I, I want to address Andy, I think has a good question. Yes. Hopefully we kind of answered That's your what question I wanted there. to do, Aaron. Okay. Well, Gina, well, then you go ahead and do no, it. No, you go ahead. After you. Well, basically, uh, Andy's question is that they, they have a gap in ages. They don't have yes. a lot of older scouts. That's another thing that can happen, right? If, if it just so happens that a bunch of scouts age out. I think Angelique kind of addressed that real quick, but that, that yeah. kind of principle would apply there, right? Yeah, absolutely. So you absolutely um, have the scouts that are needing to take some of the training and then scaffolding for them, like so that they don't feel like they're floundering. You could also, the other thing to consider is bring in a, a few scouts from a same gendered troop. Um, to come in and lead the ILST modules or come in and help set an example for your scouts for an activity um, so that your scouts are seeing other scouts in action that they can identify with and ask questions with. Um, so it's a little bit of creativity, um, a lot bit of going back to the basics and then making sure that even if you are facilitating ILST, that you're leaving room for the scouts to be in charge of it whenever possible. Andy wants to know too, and yeah. I do think that we we touched on this, but I'm curious what your gut is. Are there any like simple tools that just exist that he could share with his scouts? Um, because he thinks things like NYLT can be a lot for younger scouts potentially. Yes. Are there some simple videos or starter resources? Oh, sure. There is um, there is the the web page. There's uh, on, and I don't have it pulled up, so I don't think there's going to be a great graphic. But there's resource for troops page on uh, scouting.org, yep. and it has a page for scouts. And it has like, here's how you structure a meeting here are the components for a meeting. And then you click on it and it gives you like, okay, here's a list of games you could try. And here's a list of things that you can talk about. So it helps set them up to run a meeting successfully. That's a lot of fun and that they're not gonna feel floundering. They're gonna have structure to it by just picking, okay, here's what goes in A, here's what goes in B and then having a good meeting. So right. that's a really good resource. And then again, as you mentioned earlier, there are the there's the patrol handbook, the patrol, patrol handbook. Those are, are wonderful resources just to read through. Yeah. And I don't know what are what is it? Can anybody read those? Um, those I believe are for sale in your local scout shop and online on uh, the scout uh, scoutshop.org. So if you're not the patrol leader, that doesn't mean you can't grab that and read it. I mean, I would recommend that every troop have one that just exists in their troop library and then goes out to the current patrol leaders and senior patrol leader so that they have a resource and you're not counting on them to get it themselves. <laughs> so that's that's handy. And it gives your troop librarian something to do. Keep track of those. Ooh, yeah. good point. <laughs> ah, that's like that good uh, trained leader, that trained leader leading the leaders. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> which gets us to what you are really wanting to talk about, which we've teased a bit. So we've talked about how leaders can train the youth on, you know, how to lead. Yeah. Where can the adult leaders get some training? So, I mean, just like the scouts, uh, we should always be learning. I know I'm always learning. I haven't, there's so much training. I haven't taken all of it. I'm always trying to learn something new. Um, so the adult training is just as important. Uh, the very first place we start is if you are not position trained, 
go get position trained. Yes, you need your youth protection, but go do your position training. Make sure if you're a scout master, you're taking the online course and you're taking the, um, the outdoor course. Make sure that you're, if you're a committee chair, you're taking your online training. Beyond that, there is so much that you can do as an adult to make sure that you're understanding how to best deliver the program. My favorite, I'm a little biased, start with round table in your council, then you, yes, go to round table. Someone said it, yes, mm -hmm. go to round table. That is where you're gonna meet other people who are on the same journey. You're gonna learn about what's going on in your council. You're gonna learn about updates coming from national. You're gonna learn super fun ideas for your troop. Um, but you could also, your council might have a scouting you. If you see that and you go, what is that? Was that for me? That's you learning more skills. Um, there's also things like the fundamentals of trainer training and trainer's edge. That's to help you learn how to train people. It's fabulous. You can take it as a troop leader. Um, we've got wood badge, which a lot of people have heard of, but I can't recommend it enough because you learn everything. Um, but then just like NYLT, that there's more than NYLT, there is more than wood badge for an adult. There is powder horn like the youth. There's a Philmont and Summit Leadership Challenge, which is uh, where you get to put those wood badge skills into, into practice. High adventure base conferences like Philmont Training Center. There's so much out there for you to keep learning as an adult too. We got to model what we are teaching our youth that if we are teaching our youth that there's always more to learn about leadership, we ourselves need to make sure that we're modeling that. I'm so glad you shouted out the high adventure bases having um, leadership training opportunities too, because I always just think, man, you could kind of make a vacation out of it. Oh, you totally can because they have family programs and the family programs, I've done them, they're spectacular. You can take your kids from very young to teenager, you can take your spouse, they get to do fun scouting activities all day that are age appropriate. And then you get to eat meals together, stay in the tent. It's super fun. Love it. And I want to address Jim's question real quick, going back to introduction to leadership skills for troops, the ILST training. Uh, is that taught at the district level? It is not. It is actually the handbook on how to run an ILST is available on scouting.org to anybody. And it is for you. Um, to facilitate with your troop. Now, um, it has step by step. Here are the activities. Here's what you're going to do. However, if you don't feel comfortable running it with your troop, you can ask a commissioner in your council or another troop with lots of experience running it. Hey, can you come out and help me facilitate this with my troop? And then they will help you run it. Ideally, after you have a little experience running it, your older scouts will run it for your younger scouts. So, so but it is totally available for you to do at the troop level on your own. Um, and it's free and easily accessible online for everybody. So if you've never done it before, it seems like a, a, a good thing for a scout master or an adult leader to do. But once yes. you get it started, like you say, the idea would be that the older kids would teach it to the yes. younger kids. Yes. Yes, Perfect. absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Very good. Well, honestly, I would say we made record time on getting through the main points. Have we missed anything? If you're at home watching too, this is your chance to get in those last minute questions while we have Angelique for just a few more minutes. But Angelique, is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, you know, I'm looking through my notes to make sure that we covered everything. Uh, and I really think there's so much. I don't know that we could cover all of it. I touched briefly on so many different training and leadership opportunities, but I really want to stress that leadership opportunities, you don't have to take a fancy course to learn leadership skills. It starts with using the edge method in your troop and making sure that you're thinking about using it properly, both you as the adult volunteer and both your scouts as the adult, as the youth leadership. So really enforcing that we're gonna do this over the top explain, demonstrate, guide, and enable will do a huge benefit for your troop, troop leadership because there's structure to how they're learning that new skill. Jeremy wants to know if there's any good books other than the manuals. <laughs> so there are so many books on leadership and youth leadership and how to facilitate. I mean, I really think, you know, you start with, you start with all the resources on scouting.org. Start there. And then uh, the training page has a whole list of everything. This is he's so good at 
putting those. It's amazing. It's yeah. incredible. He's really going above and beyond. Yeah, got there, into him, Gina. <laughs> start there and see where it takes you. A lot of the courses, um, perhaps some of the adult courses like Wood Badge, will refer to many, many, many books. Uh, I think I have some sitting on my shelf over here uh, where they're taking content from it to teach about leadership skills. And, and you know, that's something that I'm constantly working on is, is learning and reading more about what was available in my Wood Badge course and what I'm teaching so that I know where it's coming from. But when we talk about this in um, Cub Chat Live sometimes too, I mean, you've got your bare minimums. You have to be youth protection trained. You probably want to do your position specific training. Right. Um, but on top of that, you know, we talk about you're the scaffolding to make sure, you know, the scouts are participating in the program. But you do, as an adult, have outside experience. You might be taking like leadership development courses at work or you might be a boss to some people or you may be just a you know self-designated leader in your role at your job those skills can be put to use too angelique said something that made me think like oh man yeah that's the ticket when she's saying ask leading questions yes yeah. that comes up in scout leadership training yeah. but also like that's what the great leaders do they they ask questions and that's just something like maybe you know in your own there, if you have any tips like that you can you know, put them work. Yeah, absolutely. You learn leadership skills, hopefully in the course of your life, and you're sharing those and mentoring the youth so that, you know, they're learning them at a much younger age than we learned them, which is awesome. Because Then you think, oh man, what kind of leader are they going to be someday? Um, because they've had all this experience. And that's one of the blessings of scouting is just seeing these capable young adults who have so much ability to navigate the world. And uh, so, yes, absolutely. Share those tidbits of leadership that you have with them and keep learning because it's going to trickle down. We've got a, a, somebody in the comment section uh, recommending the IOLS course, which I had to look up. That's Gina. Do you know what that is? Introduction to Outdoor Leadership Skills. Mm -hmm. That yeah, is for Scoutmasters. Yep, that's yeah. For, yeah, this is for a training for adults. Yep, yep. Had somebody recommend that. Somebody recommended the Climb On Safely training if you're interested yeah. oh, in yeah. taking your, uh, your so scouts much. rock climbing or things like that. These are these are our leadership courses for adults that help you be a better leader. And in turn, right, what you're hoping is you're able to teach your, your sure. kids how to be better leaders. We didn't even yeah, get into like a lot of the pe like specific, like Climb On Safely is a good example. Like there's a lot of activity specific trainings out there yes. as well. Yep. There's uh, including there's Leave No Trace, um, uh, Leave No Trace 101, Leave No Trace Trainer, Leave No Trace Master Educator. That's teaching, teaching you how to teach outdoor um, Leave No Trace skills. Those are great. I'm going to give a shout out to anyone who feels strongly about uh, outdoor ethics. Those are great to take as an adult and a youth. Those are available for youth as well. Um, but there's everything. There's climbing, there's shooting sports, there's continuums of training for basically wherever your interests lie, uh, either as a youth or an adult, to be able to build on your skills and learn more and be a better leader. Well, there's a there's a trend developing in the comments where people are posting, you know, the trainings that they can. I love it. Let's have that keep going. Like it should keep going for the next yeah. few days and weeks. It doesn't have yeah. to stop just when we stop talking. We've also got some proponents of Order of the Arrow, including I had to look this one up, Developing Youth Leadership Conference. Apparently, yeah. I didn't know that. That's about yeah. three years old when I learned about that. <laughs> I've got lists here where I've got mm -hmm. all that listed out in front of me, but it would literally just be me reciting for five minutes about all these different opportunities. So please. That's what the comments are for, comments. for folks yeah. to just post those. Exactly. And Rob says that they use a local order of the era chapter to help facilitate some of their training mm -hmm. uh, if, if the, the troops can't do it themselves, which, sure, is, that's which is a great, great resource idea. to have. Yeah, mm -hmm. great idea. Beautiful. Well, guys, keep these comments coming. This was a, an extremely successful Troop Talk Live. We're two for two. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, I would say for, we're two for two, and I would say we should keep it going. So yeah, please tune in. Going. Uh, second Wednesday of every month. So uh, we'll be doing this again in April. Yes. Uh, we, we have a, speaking of leadership, we have a tremendous leader in Angelique who is just guiding Gina and I through right. these early. Gina and I are kind of like a scout troop that don't really know what they're doing. We're a brand new yes. scout troop. Angelique asks us questions us like, through, yes. do you think it makes sense to be on time? And we're like, yes, maybe, no. sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate everybody watching today. And again, lots of great comments. Everybody go back and scroll through the comments if you haven't done that already. Angelique, congratulations. We're two for two. Thank you for hey. joining us today. Thanks for having me. It was super fun. And thank you everybody for watching again. You can see more of Angelique and me this Friday on Cub Chat Live at 2 p.m. Central. Please join us.
In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your week, everybody. Great job, Gina. Great job, Angelique. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.